Hey guys, it's Robin R. Silent Crafts and welcome to my craft room. This is my Whip It Wednesday video where I'm going to show you whatever I've been working on in the craft room this week. But before we get to that, I just want to get out a big huge thank you for everyone that keeps coming back each week and watching my videos and chatting in the comments and sending me emails and all those different things. Because of you guys, this channel has hit 24,000 subscribers and that is huge. When I first started this channel, I thought, oh, how amazing would it be just to get 500 subscribers? And then as it got going, I thought, wow, 25,000 subscribers, that's probably where I'm going to top off. I can't imagine getting any more than that. How many people are going to really come by and hang out with me and listen to me ramble on and chitter, 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 chitter? Hi, you know, it's just crazy. But now it's at 24,000 and I thought, wow, maybe we can go a little bit higher than 25,000. Maybe that was a little bit of a, a low dream, and now we can move it up to a higher goal and work our way towards 50,000, which would be crazy. I can't even think about that high of a number. But I just wanted to make sure that I said a big thank you to you guys and say thank you. Say the same words over and over again because I am just, I'm just amazed every day that you guys are in my life, and I appreciate it. So last Friday's tutorial was for the, the little cozy to put your double pointed knitting needles. And you guys seem to really like that video and you came up with so many ideas that you could use them for to change it up a little bit. So if you want to go ahead and check out that video and look in the comments, there's a different, different ideas in there about adding vinyl and making up different sizes and what you can use them for. So those are done. I also wanted to play with some of my scrappy strips. My containers are starting to get full again, so I need to start making some things with them. And I'm like, okay, well, I've made enough crumb blocks. I really shouldn't make any more crumb blocks. Let's move on to something. So I thought, well, you know, if you've got strings, you should make string blocks. So I started doing some quilt as you go on the batting. But then after making them, and I thought, okay, well, I made them the smaller size, six and a half. I believe these are eight and a half. Yep, eight and a half. So I made these three and I thought, you know what? That's not what I want to do. So I'm going to go ahead and switch up and try maybe quilt as you go log cabin squares and see where I can go from there. Maybe not quilt as you go, maybe just go ahead and make them. I would like to put some curtains in my kitchen window and I was thinking since I have the crumb ones here, they're over there on that side of the wall, that maybe I'll put some log cabin ones in the kitchen. So skip the batting. Just make some scrappy log cabins, whether they're wonky or not, and then put them, put a backing on it and go ahead and put them in the kitchen window. So I, that's what I think I'm going to go ahead and try later on this week and see if that, you, playing with scraps are great, but you really got to feel it. You know, you can't just say, oh, I'm going to make something with my scraps and be done. If it doesn't keep your mind, even though it's a mindless task, your mind still has to be part of it and it has to be intrigued and interested and wanting to do it. And as you see... In a week, all I did was these three, and I did these all in one session, so it was probably less than an hour. So I was like, ah, yeah, no, it's boring me. So then I switched over to one of my favorites. Do you remember last week when I showed you the postcard I got from Russia, and it came with these, whoops, these two little mini panels? They were sewn together. I just go ahead and clip them apart and I decided to put them down. I did that quilted jiggle like I showed you guys with the zipper pouches where you I laid it down. I just did a little bit of an outline here because I didn't want to quilt this all the way down. And then you stitch one piece on, a couple quilting lines, other piece on, quilting lines. So I did that with both of these. These I believe are already in my art tryer shop. So if anyone's interested, you can find them in there. Then I went about my week doing everything else you got to do and all the different things. And I thought, well, I'm going to play a little bit more. So then I started playing with some fabric postcards. While working through and cleaning up my craft room and moving things around, I found some books. I found A Year in the Life of Sunbonnet Sue. These are little rotary cutters. Let's see if you can see those. That's going to be important in a minute. And then I also found the calendar quilts. See those little itty bitty tiny ants? Well, they're not so itty bitty. So I wanted to pull these back out and start working on these, but I wasn't ready for it. I don't have all the fabric without a good shopping trip. There's a couple more. There's the 4th of July. 
So I just went ahead and pulled some elements out of it and I made some fabric postcards because it doesn't take much fabric for that and I have everything I need. So I have, this is the ant that looks so tiny up there. This ant, you know, the postcard is four and a half by six and a half. So you figure the ant's about that size, a little bit smaller. But I put him on what looks like a little picnic blanket. I kind of put him a little crooked. I did that on purpose. And then I did put him a little bit low. So he's about walking right on the edge of the blanket. I thought that was a fun one. And there was one with flowers. I don't know, it's probably May as a maypole. So one of them had flowers in it. So I went ahead and did some batiks. Now the yellow and the blue flower is a batik and the green. And then this black is just something that it almost reminds me of a velvet, like an embossed velvet. It just has that rich look to it, really plush. But it's not, it's just basic cotton. It's just the way it's been printed and stuff. So I made one of those. And I got so excited with making these that I forgot to trim up before I went ahead and put the stitches all the way around it. So there was some of the white cardboard showing out through here. So I just went ahead and I took a black Sharpie and I did that little trick where you color it in. Now I'm only tattling on myself for you guys to know that if you have an issue like that, you can just go ahead and color that white in with whatever color you need. Now you're gonna notice on a couple of these that I wasn't able to, and you can't really trim it after it's been stitched down because you'll trim the stitches. I think they're perfectly fine and they're okay. Sometimes it just happens. I'll do my best to remember next time. Here is the rotary cutter. I put a piece of salvage and Q for quilting. I went ahead and I quilted the background for, you know, if it's a quilting card, it should be quilted. It looks like it's been quilted through the rotary cutter, but I just went ahead and I pressed it really nicely with an iron. So while it looks pressed, it really, I mean, while it looks like it's been stitched, it really hasn't. It's just the way that the batting and everything is popping up. And I think it still came out fine that way. So I have that one. And of course, I cut out more than just one rotary cutter. This one had, okay, so that one's got just a straight red cotton fabric for the selvage. And this one has, I want to say that I have no idea. This, this looks like it might be a panda or something, but it's got some nice bright colors and everything. So I just put that selvage down. This fabric underneath here, let's see if we can see that. It's actually little pins. Like when you push pin, you put it in for your fabric when you're sewing. So I thought that was the perfect background fabric for that. It had an apple in there for going back to school in September for the teacher. So I put the apple on there and I had this fabric with this little bit of a banner on it like this. So I just trimmed off the ABCD parts to fit on there. And I have the little blue. I like the blue polka dots, blue with white polka dots on it. And my last one was just a simple 4th of July. This was a fabric that had all of this on it. Not necessarily a panel, but maybe a, a row by row fabric or something. I don't know. But it's got these like flowers that are like fireworks for the stars. It's got the hat and the hearts and the American flag, your stars. God bless us all. More stars and back to your little flower fireworks. I made one more for a one-on-one -on -one swap I did with Instagram. I did a quick little video for it here. When I was posting fabric postcards on Instagram, I got a message saying, hey, you want to swap fabric postcards with me? I love to make them. And I'm like, yeah, I love to make them too. And I'd love to swap them. So sure. Did you love that conversation? So this is the one I made. I haven't signed the back of them or put the little line on yet. And for her, since I'm swapping it one-on-one -on -one like that, I will probably go ahead and write on it because it's a little bit different than if I'm sending it to you guys as a gift. Because then if you do or don't like it, you can always... I always feel like if I'm sending it as like a gift to my patrons or as a prize or something on YouTube, that if you guys are always like, oh, Robin, I love looking at your fabric postcards, but you know, I have enough of them. You can use them yourself and go ahead and send them to someone else. That's why I always leave the backs blank. But in a swap situation like this, it's probably going to go ahead and write my name and the date, my RS Island Crafts, Robin Lalone, and probably Cape Coral, Florida you know, Instagram swap, put a little information on it just as a reminder of what the swap was from. But I won't be putting any addresses or anything on it at all like that because as you guys know, I put them in a clear envelope. Sorry about the wobbling. I put them in a clear envelope and put a shipping label on it. That way, I just love seeing them go through the mail like that. They stay protected with the clear envelope. 
They don't get dirty. Hopefully they seem to survive without getting torn and ripped. And also they go through the machines at the post office and that allows it to go through for just a stamp. The clear envelope keeps everything from getting hooked in the machine. And then that shipping label gives the post office something to cancel. And there just seems to be so far so good. I believe I've sent out at least a hundred of them now that they've all, as far as I know, no one has mentioned that I don't always tell people when they're getting it. So maybe they didn't get it and I just don't know it. Most of the time I let my patrons know, I'm like, hey patrons, I'm sending out gift, uh, gift cards, fabric postcards to you guys. You could stick a little gift card in the back and send it off. It would be thin enough still, right? All right, I'm in a babbling mood today. It's Sunday. I'm going to I'm gonna go ahead and have a little fun in the sewing room. Back to you, Robin. Thought that was fun. I love getting messages on Instagram. Hey, do you want to swap a fabric postcard? Now all of these are going to be going in the shop. Uh, this is Monday morning and I haven't sat down to put them in the shop yet. So they should be in there by the time you see this video on Wednesday. If not, and you're interested in one of them, just go ahead and send me a message and I'll get it all set up for you. But I'm pretty sure that these two are 99.9% .9 in the shop. I really like this look with the little design in it and then the, the fabric that goes around it. This is the favorite type of fabric. It's not, it's that marbled, speckled, tone on tone, blender fabric. I really love a nice blender fabric. And I think that's what these technically are listed as, is blender fabrics. It's got the blue with a little bit of light spots, a little bit of dark spots with the green, has a little bit of yellow here and there. And I just love that fabric instead of a straight solid. Straight solid just comes out a little too flat for me, so I like to have it a little bit movement-like. So last week I showed you that I had finished one of the mittens. I just needed to put the little thumb on it. This week I'd started on the cuff for the second one. I'm on like row 12. I need 14 rows before I can start working on the pattern. I do have it in here. So I'm getting really close to being at the end and then I'll just go ahead and start into the design and these two will match. I have a crochet project that I finished. I showed you guys this shawl a little while ago. I actually finished this more in May. I just needed to weave in the ends. So this came out really nice. I love the way these yarns look. It's definitely not my colors. I'm not much in the browns and creams and stuff like that, but I think it's a beautiful shawl. I did do a little, not necessarily a twirl video, but that's what they call them when you sew something. You make a skirt or something or a dress and then you twirl and show it to them. So here's my little twirl video, not twirling. So I think that came out as a really good size, don't you? Just enough to wrap in, and depending on how tall you are, I'm about 5'6", five, 5'7", five, so you can see where it comes down past my waist and stuff like that. So if you were a smaller person, it would be it would cover more, of course, because it's a big enough shawl, it's one of the larger shawls. And I'm waving here, as I also received a package last week, and in it was some fabric postcards that I'd like to share with you. We've got some Houston, Texas. Got Alaska. Look at the colors of the blue of the water and the uh, the ice and stuff like that. It's just beautiful. Niagara Falls. And this is a lighthouse in Oregon. Oregon, however you want to say it. I've always said Oregon. Okay, and this one, I'm gonna say the word wrong, but this one is Yaquina, Yaquina Bay Bridge in Newport, Oregon. This one is, is St. Werber Street in Chester, Cheshire. This one is Litchfield in Staffordshire, Staffordshire. 
I'm sure wherever you live, like I can tell when people say words here that whether they're local or they're tourists, because every state, every city, every country all around the world has one of those names that people just can't say. It looks like it should be simple and you should be able to just say it right across, but you always have to put a little twang in it or something and it always changes how the word is said. So nothing too exciting going on here in my world. It's just extremely hot in Florida and we're not getting any rain, but we're getting that the Saharan dust that's been coming over. It's making the sky very hazy. And while you can see where the sun is, of course, it's just got this, it's just got a haze in front of it. And they say it's supposed to make for a gorgeous sunrises and sunsets, but I've seen a lot of color in the sky, but I haven't seen anything spectacular yet. Summers in Florida are always hot. It's just we're having this extreme heat wave. I know a lot of you guys are also suffering from the same thing wherever you're at. It all just depends on where you are and what the level is. Because let's face it, if you're used to the temperatures being 80, 85 all the time, if it hits 90, you guys are going to be hot. So it doesn't matter where you live. If it's like, I've heard in Alaska that they start to get hot at like 75 because they're used to that cooler weather all the time. So hot is hot no matter where you live. If you're hot, you're hot. I just miss the rain. The rain in the afternoon, we usually get rainstorms somewhere between like two, three o'clock in the afternoon or maybe after dinner and it cooled down the house. So that lovely rain will like cool down the house. It'll cool down outside and it'll just be nice weather and it'll be comfortable. It'll be hot, but it won't be sweltering. So I've been out watering the hibiscus hedge in the morning and at night. I've got some grass that's growing. I've fertilized everything. I'm waiting on a new sprinkler to come. One of them ones from our childhood that goes Remember you used to run through those sprinklers? They have some that go like this, but my side yard is so narrow that I want to water the hibiscus hedge that is this long versus something that I have to move every half hour, hour from here to here to here to here. So that's coming. As we all know, things coming in the mail tend to go a little bit slower, but they didn't have what I wanted locally. And I'm really not leaving the house that much. Pure laziness, I just don't wanna go out. I've got some special fertilizer that's been on back order that they don't even sell locally. So I didn't have a choice but to order it online. Some special miracle Grow for blooms for the flowers specifically. The fertilizer I've been using right now is for grass or plants or vegetables or flowers, whatever that's growing, you can go ahead and use it. And now it's doing great on the grass. It hasn't done too much for the hibiscus yet. There's, some of them are struggling and I think either a squirrel or a rabbit is eating the leaves because these the hibiscus are getting bare, but there's no leaves on the ground. So unless they're just miraculously blowing away when the yellow leaves aren't blowing away, then someone's eating the green ones. So there's a couple ones that are getting eaten and a couple of ones that are doing really great. So I'm just waiting for this rain to come because I know when I had them on my front porch, once the rain hit versus me just trying to figure out how much to water them, that they would explode and get really big. So I'm just figuring once the rain hits, we tend to be very dry before the 4th of July. Our actual first rainy day coming up, that's going to be more than 20% chance of showers. It's more like, hey, everyone, you're getting rain. It's, of course, the 4th of July. I have been here since I was 13, so it's been, you know, almost 40 years, and it has rained, I would say, 90% of the time on the 4th of July. Very seldom do you get a 4th of July where there's no rain. Now, it doesn't always mess with the fireworks. A lot of times it'll rain earlier in the morning or the afternoon, but we've had plenty of days where it rains all the way through the fireworks shows, which doesn't matter too much this year because there won't be any big professional city-run fireworks show. I'm just going to watch my neighbors do all of theirs because they've already been lighting them off, so I'm sure they're gonna have a really good show on the 4th of July. One more thing before I let you go. If you guys are interested in swapping postcards, I've just signed up today as of Monday, June 29th, 2020, in case you watch this later, to a February postcard swap on Instagram. Now they are accepting up to 300 people into this swap. It's a direct mail, which means that I'm gonna put a link in my community tab. I'll put it up as soon as I'm done with this video. So you'll see this on Wednesday. If you haven't seen the information in the community tab, just go ahead and look through. If you go right to my channel, 
there's a little community tab you can click on and I'll put all the information there. I'll see if I can link to Instagram. If not, I will give you the person's name that's running it so that you can go ahead and sign up if you want. You can sign up for five fabric postcards to mail them either locally in whatever country you're in or internationally everywhere. I'm also donating some prizes. I'm going to be donating this beach theme zipper pouch. I thought that was good for the summer. Now this swap is running all the way to the end of August. So technically it's still the summer. And then I have this bug, one of the zipper pouches that like the pyramid kind like this. Remember when we were, I was making these for a while there. So I'm going to donate that. And I'm also going to donate a fabric postcard. I didn't think about donating a fabric postcard as a prize, but the person that's running it, she's donating one for as a prize too. So I thought, well, if there's going to be 300 people, this is really inexpensive for me to mail out. And it's something that I know a lot of you guys love the salvage ones. And I've sent these out to my patrons and they did really well. So I thought I'd go ahead and just donate one of these also. So as I said, if you're interested, go ahead and check back on the community tab. If you can't find it and you need help, just go ahead and message me on Instagram and it's easier for me to link on Instagram directly to it than to link offsite. So I hope everyone stays safe and stays cool this summer and I'll see you guys next week. Bye.